Good morning, everybody. The Kansas City Royals technically haven't lost a playoff game in the last 29 years, including this season. And they're coming off that extra inning win in the wild card game against the Oakland A's a couple nights ago. Last night, they started a best of five game series with the Los Angeles Angels starting in L.A. Jason Vargas would get the start over Danny Duffy for game one. We pick up with the first angel of the game. And he takes it deep to center, but watch Lorenzo Cain bring it back from over the wall. He earns a tip of the cap from the batter there. Top third, Alcides Escobar will double just short of the wall. And that brings around Mike Moustakis to put Kansas City up 1-0 early. Bottom of that same inning, Chris Iannetta gets it back for him. Solo shot to left off of Vargas, ties things up at one apiece. Then fifth inning. A familiar face in October, the former Cardinal, David Fries, takes Vargas deep, almost to that same spot as Ionetta. That ties the game up again at 2-2, but it set up Moustakis to be an extra inning hero with this go-ahead home run to put KC up 3-2. Greg Holland would come in for the save after his wife had a baby earlier. The Royals take game one, 3-2. Game two is tonight at 8-30. And the former Mizzou star Max Scherzer was the game one pitcher for Detroit and Baltimore. He'd have a bit of a shaky start as the first inning Nelson Cruz hits a two-run bomb off of Scherzer. Baltimore goes up 2-0. to zero. Next inning, right after a Victor Martinez homer, J.D. Martinez takes one to right, ties that game up at 2-2. But then bottom of the second, Scherzer still going. Nick Markakis singles up the middle put the Orioles up for good. Scherzer would go seven and a third, giving up five runs, and Baltimore would absolutely pile on the runs in the eighth. Ian Kinsler strikes out there, swinging to end the game. Baltimore rolls for a 12 to three win in their game one. And the Missouri men's basketball team will begin practice on Monday under new head coach Kim Anderson. But with no Jabari Brown, Ernest Ross, or Jordan Clarks anymore, the Tigers' top returning scorer, Jonathan Williams III, he averaged about six points per game last year. Anderson has hinted that experienced big men, much like Williams III and Ryan Rosberg, will likely start. But after that, the playing time gets a little tight and the starting roles seem to be up for grabs and they will not be determined until closer to the start of the season. I can make a case for all 11 guys at this point, or at least eight or nine of them. So uh, I think this will be a team that, especially early on, will be you'll see a lot of guys, you know. Now, ultimately, I'd probably like to get down to, to eight or nine, but I'm not married to that. I see myself as a potential leader, but I feel like everybody on the team has a role in leading the team. So I'm not going to go out and say I'm the leader of the team, Keith. We, just because we're seniors, we're leaders of the team. Everybody has to play their role, and I think we're doing a good job of that. Now, tonight, tonight marks week number seven for Friday Night Fever. Playoffs already getting closer and closer, and as usual, many games still interesting right now on the schedule, including the Helias Crusaders visiting the Rockbridge Bruins. Rockbridge 4-2 and two on the year, and they're coming off that 36-31 victory over Jefferson City last week. They feature wide receiver Alex Fadle, who of course is going on to play for the Oregon Ducks after he graduates. Helias is 6-0 and on the year, the Crusaders' closest game, still a 15-point win over Battle. Helias, they feature tight end Hale Hinches who is going to Alabama to play for the Crimson Tide. Hale's a heck of a player. Um, he's a great kid. Um, you know, Alex and, and his past have crossed a lot from even going way back to the basketball scene. What's the key to stopping a kid like that? Oh, man, numbers. I mean, find numbers to account for him. Uh, you can't leave him singled up in any situation. You have to make sure you always know where he is on the field. You know he's going to be um, a part of what they're going to do offensively for sure. And so, you know, if you can account for him and know where he is and make sure you got numbers to account for him, you'll be uh, at least uh, taking a step in the right direction. That's all for sports.